My name is Mike McDonald. I'm the acting or current uh, Open Space Chairman, which is a informational uh, works on in concurrence, whatever, with the Conservation Committee. <coughs> in this past spring, we worked with the uh, Conway School of Landscape and Design, and a couple of their three three masses students uh, over their winter term. Basically, took our open space plan, went through it with a fine tooth comb, did a very good job on it, and a couple of them actually have uh, very strong backgrounds in water management and conservation. A couple, of, I think, one of them had like a landscape and business. Uh, that he ran too, so it was like a uh, very talented group of individuals that went through the plan. And unfortunately, I only brought one copy. The other copies are with the uh, the other members of the open space committee. They're going through and basically vetting the information that was put into it. And for the most part, they took the original plan, which was originally, I think it was a uh, 2007. It was a uh, you know minor minor updates, a couple things, but still lacking a lot of a lot of pieces and parts. So basically, we're uh, ten years behind, and and uh, I think we got a got a pretty good draft. There's still a couple pieces that need to be uh, added to it, um, but basically, brought it so you guys can kind of get a look at breeze through it. Yep, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was gonna give Rachel an electronic copy, and we can post that. Online, mm -hmm. just as a, a draft document nice. or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just as, as somebody that's never seen that before, what are some of the highlights that yeah. would be basically, interest, interest to us? Uh, basically, the highlights for certain types of grants uh, for, for the town to have access to would be like uh, at the federal and state level. Uh, one of the requirements to uh, get those drafts or get those grants or whatever is to be able to submit a grant to have a current and uh, approved open space plan by, I'm not sure if it's the Department of Environmental Protection or Department of State, there's some sort of, um, might be the Department of Recreation, I'm not really sure, yeah. but basically to get grants, uh, you know, that kind of goes in line with that conservation, recreation, if you want to have a grant for like new playground or update the ball fields or something like that, there's money and funds available, but you have to have a current open space plan to be able to get access to those funds. Does this address certain fees? Yep, yep. Uh, one, okay. of the, mm -hmm. one of the first sections uh, gives you a rundown of like the, it's actually pretty, the group that, you know, Sandra did a great job uh, doing like the geology that makes up the town of Pembroke, how the ponds got here in the first place, goes like the glacial history, which is really kind of uh, in depth and interesting. Uh, There's another section that has like the demographics of the town, for example, kind of gives you analysis of the kind of building and the kind of uh, economic background that uh, the citizens are, are from. We did a couple uh, public surveys for the Open Space Committee. We got about, uh, I think, 1% of the population. It's kind of a, a small showing, but it did give a good... Uh, I would say like a good sample across the board. It wasn't a, a large sample, but it did give you a good varied sample of what the people were interested in, because there's a lot of different, uh, a lot of different opinions of, you know, what the town's lacking, what they like about the town, and everything like that. So there's a, a lot of strong opinions mm -hmm. that I usually find, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <coughs> and section five gives you an inventory of the open spaces that are have either conservation restrictions, which means that. Either the town of Pembroke owns them. We have uh, we're fortunate to work with Wildlands Trust, and they have a couple properties here with mm -hmm. us. And they've and they've uh, gone through different developers and stuff like that. They work very well with with other groups, and uh, we have a couple nice nice properties that have like water frontage and everything like that that they help manage and they also help secure. And uh, so conservation restrictions, um, you know, any any land that's owned by the Town, town's conservation uh, committee, any historical properties or points of cultural interest and stuff like that, those are all highlighted in there. And um, I think we list the town properties as well because and kind of delineate between the school, what's used for school prop, because not all, not all open space is strictly, you know, walking trails or ponds or whatever. That's something that people don't realize. It's also cemeteries. It's also, you know, playgrounds and, and ball fields and that's because you know 
you know, you're not gonna just because you put up a ball field, the grease not gonna stop going there and stuff like that, which right. is, you know, adds as value for the um, ecologically, not the ecological standpoint, but you know, from the nature nature side of things, it still adds value by not making it to a parking lot. Mm -hmm. So, it's, so it's a lot of information, but yeah, it's a yeah. uh, more than a glance for sure. <coughs> Will those be available for people to get a copy of those? Yeah, actually, what they what they've done in the past is they they burned a bunch of copies, and each department would would have a copy. Uh, they would have copies available at the town library. Mm -hmm. and I think even I don't know if they perhaps at the post office. Was post there? office, I think yeah. maybe a couple of the school libraries too. They put them yeah. out to. Um, this is a draft. Yeah. And each um, department in the town um, gets a copy to review and and give their edits. Exactly. When we're pretty, <laughs> I think we're getting pretty close to that point. Uh, there's a couple of major sections that still need to be done. Uh, we need to figure out about a build-out analysis, uh, and, uh, ADA accessibility study, which is the uh, is American Disability Act. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to for the town to have you know public space or whatever we have to have I'm not sure if it has to be a person with a qualification to do it or if it's just a simple checkbox survey or whatever basically take an inventory of the spaces that we have and how accessible they are to people with wheelchairs or with disabilities and it's something I want to keep track of and make sure that we're not kind of pushing them out to the friend or something like that eliminating their access to the amount of spaces that we have around town mm -hmm. and then um, section 5.3 is that what Sandra's looking at right Which is, now. I, this, I find it really interesting. The process. And uh, so a lot of that was just, that section was just last minute. The guys didn't realize that, you know, it was a big a big chunk of data that they had to go through and they didn't think they could, you know, do, speak, you know, speak well to it in a short amount of time that they had because that was like one of the last things they looked at. What is that well, section? <coughs> the land inventory and it's, it's a combination of all the chapter lands. Does it have the tax takings in it? Tax taking not, parcels. Not sure if it has a tax, like the chapter um, sixty one parcels. And then it'll have the all the land use codes, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, yeah, and whatever. then it also the so there's a quantity and section, and then there's also a qualifiable section about you know is is this uh, does this have good water frontage? Does this abut maybe other other open space lands? Does it abut maybe another town? Because yeah. one of the things they came out with is that. We have a lot of borders with the towns, with other towns with open space, but it kind of ends with us. And there's a lot of sections that are still um, not not protected, but also, you know, sections that you'd want to protect, like you know, along the North River and, and th yeah, things like that. Yeah, I was just like going to ask if you could give an example. Okay. Yeah, North River and I would say the Great Great Cedar Swamp too. I think are the two areas that they Absolutely. highlight in there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> One of the greatest places in town. Yeah, <laughs> and then there's a couple. Uh, areas I was hoping to get, you know, input from you guys about with your background because they have a s small paragraph about lawns. And I'd like to, you know, add in a thing about like fertilizer and runoff and maybe like what could you do as an alternative to avoid that or whatever. And then there's a small section about invasive species that they kind of talk about, but I think maybe we can highlight some of the uh, species that are problematic that we're seeing in our area because if you look online, you know, you get a list of a thousand different things, but if the town of Pembroke knows that there's a certain... I, I would guess that the Pembroke Watershed Association would be right up to date with their um, different volunteers. They mm -hmm. have like the weed watchers, I think they there call themselves. Yeah. So. Well, you know, we just went to a meeting last week and okay. there's only four people that are active in that whole day. It's, fall, it's fallen apart. Okay. They're trying to revive it. So okay. right now it's it's kind of a dormant, <coughs> uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, association, but they're trying to revive it and get membership. So, uh, you know, it's... Uh, it's on life support right now, but they're trying to trying to kick it back up. <coughs> it's kind of tough with the, uh, you know, the volunteer associations. It's like everybody yeah. has time and nobody has time. And yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the only way you're going to really get a handle on a lot of the invasives is start with the simple ones, the loose start. They're pretty hand pullable. To start around the ponds mm -hmm. and start upstream and go downstream. Mm -hmm. There's some places are loaded, some places aren't. But um, if you just leave them, that's all you're going to have. How do you spell it? Loose strife. Loose strife. Yeah, purple loose strife. That's all around sandy. You can just pull it up, but then you have bare sand, and only they're allowed to do that, not us, right? 
you can't pull a weed and leave bare sand. They can just drain the water down and leave bare sand so yeah. the plant grows there. In Lauren, I'm not certain how that would work. You want to remove a whole lot of them, you're going to have bare sand. Mm -hmm. And that might be another. That's identity. a lawbreaker. So. I didn't even think of that too, yeah, but that might but be But they a good can thing do it, but I'm not certain of remediating <coughs> weeds, you can do that. Excuse me. That so you're looking to elaborate on the portion of the plan that addresses ponds mm -hmm. and part of it, the invasives? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and there are only four members of the water system. But they're looking they for more help. And, and half of that, Sandra, go half ahead. of that forms a husband and wife <laughs> team. So I think I know yeah. the husband and wife you're yeah, talking um, about. And it's funny, I, I went on their website actually and. Um, uh, you know, they list the water bodies in Pembroke, and most of Silver Lake is actually in Pembroke. They don't even list Silver Lake on yeah, the website yeah. as something that they're concerned about. So <laughs> uh, that was interesting to me. But uh, you know, again, I think it's a it's a it's an agency that. Uh, or I'm not that sure Hanson knows that Oldham by. is in their town. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They used the weed harvester a couple of years. No, they did. Yep. <laughs> hmm. Well, DEP didn't, right? When they sent that letter. That was different. Yeah, they didn't know that Hanson, that the pond was in Hanson. Oh, well. <laughs> well <laughs> talking about the state. <laughs> <laughs> We're being recorded, and um, <laughs> um, it's interesting, though. There was one thing that you were talking about on there as well, and the one I was going to make a comment about, but I mm -hmm. don't know what it was. I can't remember. Anyone have any questions for Mike? Yeah, so just curious, so what, what's your next step and what's the timetable to get this? Uh, well, basically, I was hoping to, uh, oh, actually, I forgot about one section, too. I'll talk, talk about this section. Let's see uh, section 9 is like a seven-year action plan, which is kind of interesting, too. <coughs> and this is a combination of the things that uh, we got from the, the town's uh, public serve, uh, the survey. public space surveys. Mm -hmm input from the townspeople and then also highlights uh, sections that the open space committee uh, recommends and it's also a couple couple points that are inputted from the uh, from the guys that wrote the plan or whatever things that they saw as best practices as far as a conservation style group or whatever and what they think a town outside should be going after <coughs> so as far as a, a timeline uh, well Part of the section is this, it needs a responsible party, a funding source, and then, uh, you know, a timeline or a mandate that they're, they're talking about an estimated uh, completion date, basically. And there's a couple couple things in here that would be pretty extensive, too. But basically, looking we at... We were talking about that earlier, the Brockton, Abington, and Rockland mm -hmm. using the water. So, you yeah, watch the video over. Because <laughs> we did, we were literally talked yeah, about that we're, earlier. We're, Can I talk about that for a minute now? Mm-hmm. Back um, when I was on the Open Space Committee, when we um, structured the purchase of Tubbs Meadow, the city of Brockton um, was open and contributed money to the purchase um, to protect their watershed around Silver Lake. So they are open to um, putting money into a project, filters maybe, or, mm. or protecting the ponds that make their way into Silver Lake. Mm -hmm. The, um, yeah, they, they end up with most of the water from that whole watershed, the, that whole area. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sometimes you have to, I think, divide water up when some could go to a Herringbrook, some could go. But in general, anything that fills Silver Lake is going to benefit the system. If, if at one point they can get under control, fill it up, get fish breeding in it, going to the sea, it's worth whatever we give as a, mm -hmm. but if they don't, then it's kind of a failed structure. The, the I water see leaves, challenge. yes, the water leaves and it's not metered. There is no measurement of how much water leaves. Yep. Well, another issue is that Brockton has a terrible uh, pipe system in town and they have built no motivation to fix it because yeah. they because get the their water for free. free. Yeah. So, you know, mm -hmm. these, there's a, just a slew yeah. of issues. Yeah, there's yeah. too many issues to yeah. be. Mm -hmm. Taken been, on by one committee on at our age, you have to start <laughs> young, <laughs> and you have to go hard with the state. Right oh, really? Yeah. I thought that I had heard too that there were some like older houses in town that were actually hooked up to Brockton yeah. water and yeah. never. A lot of the ones on 27. Yeah, yeah and exactly. they not even transferred over to right. Pembroke. 
And said, why would you? I know. Well, right, <laughs> why right. would you? <laughs> well, the only water main that runs a good section right. of 27 is Brock. That's right. Mm -hmm. huh. Two of them. Two, two, what are they, 22 inch? 24s. 24s, yeah. yeah. Well, they run actually through the box. Yep, right through. And in my house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right through the box. Mm -hmm. I actually saw a Brockton truck working yeah, there last week. Or yeah, they've been out. Uh, they've had a company out trying to redo their gates because they had an issue and they couldn't shut it down. I believe it was the issue when they blew the guy's yard up in Bridgewater. They couldn't get everything shut down as quick as they needed to, so mm -hmm. they've been slowly working their mm -hmm. gates to mm -hmm. put new setups in. <coughs> Interesting. Anytime you see the steel plates on 27, it's not us, it's them. Okay. <laughs> so as far as a timeline, hoping to get this completed by the end of the year and submitted to the state, and then that way we can start working forward with uh, our action items in 2018. So I, so I heard you say something about uh, funding. So as a subcommittee of us, is that funding that uh, we assist with, or do they do that on their own for yeah. whatever needs funding? Well, it's funding is not just from here. It's any of the town funding usually needs an open space mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's just one of those requirements when anyone is looking for, a, you know, for funding. They say, well, you have an open space plan that's so, up to date. So that would go to town meeting. Yeah. Well, funding. If past mm -hmm. practice, for example, if the open space committee, when I was on it, um, was interested in purchasing a piece of land, the members would write the grant and then go in front of town meeting and ask um, okay. for funding. So it's an article at town meeting? Yeah. Okay. And then do you, will you be more specific with us with the questions that you have? Because I know you said something about the chemicals when fertilizing the lawn. I remember that coming up a lot that you yeah. were doing, right, for special conditions with we people? Have, yeah, we have a special condition on all of our orders of conditions that yeah, um, calls for <coughs> well, we use no fertilizer, no, depending mm -hmm. where the where the I, project is. Mm -hmm. I almost think where we're such a sensitive town and an aquifer that it wouldn't be unreasonable in the future to have only licensed applicators apply with a given time, why, and reason. And that you take the tonnage out of, we've already cut the cranberry bogs down, they were huge. Now most of the contamination comes on the individual, as far as I'm concerned, and his own play in his yard. Um, and I mm -hmm. think that's what you're going to have to watch out for. Like, you go down the pond, you see all these, these beautiful, you know, there's a 50-foot buffer of lily pads, and all of a sudden there's two houses and there's none. Mm -hmm. That didn't just happen. That's chemicals. And you can read these things all over, but again, it's... I think where the bogs have been um, in their, their downturn, and they're not polluting that much, and I think what's going to happen is the town has to look at its own selves as applicators and be in tune with where we live. Mm -hmm. Pet well, safe to bay safe. I'm just, if mm -hmm. I'm following you, you're saying all chemicals have to be a licensed applicator. I think you find it very hard to say a homeowner can't mm -hmm. take care of yeah. his yard no matter what. Just the expense what. of having yeah. somebody I mean, that, do it. Uh, and, so and any commercial landscaper should know that they have to have a licensed applicator to put almost anything out that way. I mean... Well, maybe then we should educate the public better rather than try to take things away. I think away. that that, that would be a good class that's, or that's a where, workshop you know, to That's what I was thinking, where um, maybe it's a more of a public and, service thing, yeah. where mm -hmm. they, yeah. and just encourage, you know, organic yeah. fertilizers. Well, exactly. I think that that's well, a big thing. Well, right the, pond, the pond people yeah. used to do similar things like that. That was always one of their big things, was mm -hmm. educating them yeah. of that buffer that they wanted to keep around the ponds. And, and all of that. I think yep. uh, being environmental fr environmentally friendly, whether you're in a cul-de-sac, a side street, a busier street, I think that that's something that's sort of, you know, the climate mm -hmm. of where we are in 2017. I think a lot of people would be interested in that. So mm -hmm. maybe that's something that a, a couple of the committees could get together and just have a workshop yeah. one day at the library. Yeah, you have to remember that we live in very condensed areas around the ponds. All of our effluent goes underground and then all of the runoff from the cars and all of the fertilizers Mm -hmm. Just dump in, mm -hmm. and there's no remediation. It's just flush the toilet, everything goes in, 
and chaos ensues. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the best examples is you know? uh, Westmont Ponset Pond. That's right. And then, you know, it's so nutrient rich. I mean, they've done so, all kinds of sampling there, and that's, you know, besides the water is stagnant because they dam it up for flower to east, but um, part of that is all the all the surrounding, you know, homes, homes. you know, and the, the nutrient point. runoff from the lawn. Yep. So, you know, mm -hmm. that's a perfect example of how bad it can get. Yeah, well, they're not supposed to be doing that anyways. I mean, those are, they all have water as a condition that they're not supposed to be using chemicals, right? Unless yep. they're organic. I mean, I know, yep. I mean, I'm near cranberry. Any, any, garden, any water that we write uh, as the condition yeah. in it about chemicals. That's, yeah. that's what we call standard yeah. boilerplate mm -hmm. that goes on there. But, I think, but, but unless somebody comes in front of the board, there's, right? no, yeah. Right, yeah. 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 there's nothing there. Yeah. 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 Until, until somebody comes yeah. before yeah. the board, it's tough to So that's such a small it. percentage yeah. of the property. Yeah. 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 And you have so many of these companies yeah. right now. Not as much as they will true green, go green, this one. They're all got salesmen pounding this. Selling this stuff. Everybody wants a green lawn. Yeah. Well, I do the uh, ticks and uh, mosquitoes mm -hmm. just because we're the on the cranberry bugs yeah. and that water sometimes gets high and stagnant, That's right, especially too. across the street from us, that little, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, oh, when you yeah. go down the hill <coughs> on the oh, right-hand yeah. side? That's yeah. awful sometimes, so we get that, we get it done, but it's all like, um, I don't know, flower-based or something, mm. what is it? All organic. All organic, it's yeah. just, uh, but you know, it's just sort of the smell that keeps the mosquitoes and instant. Yeah. Well, I think that's the education part of this where, yeah. you know, as you said, people are amenable to that type of stuff yeah, in this okay. environment. So, you know, maybe some uh, education would... Uh, I think that would be great for us to do maybe the in the spring. Like go organic and, yeah. uh, and you know... All right, so would stack such working help. on that, Rick. Well, <laughs> Rick, start a committee. <laughs> no, I started a few. I think um, we have a grant, possibly, that we'll get a reforestation nursery going um, in this town. That would be nice. And then mm -hmm. hopefully another one for a conservation kind of land is beautiful for farming. Love to see a community farm going. Mm -hmm. Both where you have two or three types. You know, people have their own plots, people pay to go in and have one. Like the Fenway? Basically. Like the Fens? Yeah, yeah. That's how they the, do in Boston, right? That idea. There's all different aspects, mm -hmm. but yeah. again, um, composting mm -hmm. and teaching people through gardening that you don't need the chemicals and that things are mm -hmm. better from the sea back to the sea. Mm -hmm. It's a cycle. Take yeah. from the sea, put it in your garden, it goes back to the sea and feed you. Yeah. Well, I think that that sounds like something good that maybe we can put together for the spring, like early spring, February, getting people ready and prepared on what to do. So maybe we can work with something with you and mm -hmm. your department, your uh, committee. I'm sure that there'll be a couple of us that would like to do that. Because um, well, I think little workshops will be good. Pamphlets made out and have them handed out at town meeting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea. You know, because people may not know who are on the pond. Like, you, you know, you have to think about, too, around the ponds. A lot of times it was, you know, I know my family had one. They lived in the city, and they had the cottage. I'm sure nobody ever told them you can't put chemicals on your lawn. So maybe it's just a matter of educating people that don't know that maybe they're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. So well, Those things will look like, um, what is it, mothballs, but they throw them in the water and kill the lilies. Um, well, my father wanted to put mothballs in my garden this year to keep away something or other, and I was like, we won't be doing that, Dad. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so there you go, okay? <laughs> I think um, a community garden, a reforestation nursery, mm -hmm. um, teach people how to do things organically, show them the process. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, perfect. It's, it's everything you do in this town goes right back out to the bay. Yeah. We're one big, mm -hmm. one big river. So, Mike, did you have anything else that you want to discuss with us? Uh, I think I think that's it for now. There's definitely some things we'll have to, you know, yep. if build, you need build on later on. But. Yeah, because if you need those uh, specific questions for us, if you mm -hmm. want to just put something together, get it to Rachel, yeah. and she can make sure to forward it to us, and Bob can answer them all. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Usually my go-to yeah. guy. Yeah. Anyway, so. I'm too glad I'm here. <laughs> So Didn't funny. you like the days when I used to just be the secretary and give you candy? <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Thank it was very so nice much. to meet you. I Thanks for coming. This is very interesting. Nice really nice. Nice, yeah. nice work. Um, does anybody else have any questions, comments, or anything for Mike? No? Any other questions, comments in general? Discussions? No? Okay. Next meeting will be... Rachel? It's up to you guys if you want to go back to every single week or if you want to stay every other week. Every other week, so we have things what to talk we, about. What do we have next week? We don't have anything scheduled. Well, I think Monday's a Next week is a holiday. Oh, Monday's, Monday's a holiday. Monday's a holiday, so we'll skip. We skip next week. Okay. 
So it will be the following week. Yeah. If anybody has anything that they want to discuss, just feel free to get that to Rachel. Um, she'll make sure to put it on the agenda so we have it. And does anybody have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Good job, guys.